Carol Corey, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm so glad you're joining me here in my creating corner. Welcome back and welcome if this is your first time. If you go ahead and click subscribe then you'll be able to come and play again. And I hope after today's card you'll want to come and play again with me. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do an autumn themed stained glass card. Isn't Can you see how you can kind of see through that? Anyways, and it's using the gorgeous Autumn Expressions Designer Series paper. But it's super simple. I think it's gorgeous. It takes a little bit of, you know, you got to be careful here and there. But it's really a fun card to make. I hope you make it along with me. Let me get this down to the creating table and let's get started. Okay, let's get started. If you want to create along with me, I will have everything I'm using and the measurements down below in the description box, but for a quick rundown, I am using the Everyday Details dies. I am using one of the sentiments from Autumn Expressions, and I am using dies and a sentiment from the Changing Leaves bundle. I'm also using some wood grain paper from the, um, ah, where is it? There we go. I am using some wood grain paper from the Country Woods Designer Series paper pack. And this is the Everyday Details die that I'll be using. I have already run it through the die cutter. I'll be using, to make things easy on my life, I'll be using our Stampin' Up! adhesive sheets. I will have a, I will need a 6x6 six six wild wheat scrap to cut out my leaves, but I've already cut a lot of them. So I just have this one left, and you see I've put the adhesive on the back already. I do have a 4x5 and a quarter window sheet, and yes, I always put like washi tape or a little, um, post-it note on the corner of my window sheet so I don't get fingerprints all over it. Here is my Autumn Expressions Designer Series paper that I've chosen to use for this card. That comes in a beautiful 6x6 pack. And then I just need a little couple scraps of basic white. And then a um, wild wheat. Let's see, this is four and a quarter by five and three quarters and I've scored it at one quarter and this wild wheat card base is five and three eighths by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter okay I've also got some let me get this out of the way I've also got some wild wheat ribbon here and a couple of blends cherry cobbler and pumpkin pie and my wild wheat ink pad. Okay, let's see what I, oh, and I do have some clear embossing powder and my Stampin' Up! Um, heat tool. Okay, let's see what I'm going to do first. The first thing I'm going to do is get my leaves cut out. As you see, these dies have teensy tiny little places and it would be very, very thin and difficult to actually adhere these to the paper. So what I've done to make my life easier is I've put adhesive sheets on the back. Now the adhesive sheets comes in a nice big pack like this and if you look ah, on the sheets themselves there are areas that are actually already scored, well kind of cut, so you can literally peel back the wax paper um, protectant and then you just put it on the paper and then after you cut it the other wax paper comes off and turns whatever you're cutting into a sticker so you've got two areas actually that come loose so you've got it's easy to use them easy to use them okay this is my mini Stampin' Up! Cut and Emboss Machine, and hopefully the mini won't shake my 
little skitchy little card table too much. Sometimes it doesn't make things fall. Let's try it. Okay, well that seemed to have done pretty well. And look, just like the big one, it folds up. The sides fold up and you can easily pack it away. I love it. Love it. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave these in place until I'm ready to use them because the other wax protectant is going to come off when I take the um, dies out. And I don't need them being sticky yet. All right, let's go ahead and put it. Alrighty, so I did use the everyday details. Now you have just straight, you've got circles, but I used the square. Um, to cut out the middle of some wood grain paper and this paper is from the ah, Country Woods Suite, the Country Woods Designer Series paper rather and on the back here I'm going to take some tear and tape and I'm going to put a lay, little, oh, you know, before I do that, I'm going to take my take your pick tool and I'm going to poke out these little holes. We've got all these little stitch holes right here, so I'm going to poke these out. Okay, that would have been quicker if I had used the little scrubby round brush that goes onto the take your pick tool, but it's across the room and I didn't <clears throat> feel like going to get it. Okay, so on the, okay, this is the color, this is the side that I want showing. So on the back, I'm going to put some tear and tape. And we are going to put this adhesive sheet down. Now this kind of would be cool as a shaker card, but um, then you would have to use your adhesive strips. But we're good like this. Let me get this off of here. There we go. We don't need to worry about it being exactly 100% tight on all sides because it's just a regular card. Okay, now we are going to put that aside for the moment. We're going to take this card. Now let me show, okay, maybe I won't put that aside. We're going to end up connecting this like so. And this is going to be connected on the inside and fold out like that. So this needs to go here. We just use some wet glue and we're going to go ahead and get that attached. We are not going to put the card base together yet because we got some work to do on it. But you do want to make sure you get your autumn paper panel in the right place on the right side. There we go. We'll put this aside. Now, as I said, I already cut out some of these leaves. Let me get this loose, get this one loose. Okay. I'm going to 
put this here so I see where that is, so that'll help me judge where I want to put my leaves. Now here are my double leaves. I've cut out five of the of each or six because I do like having a nice deep well and that'll make sense in just a minute if you've never done a stained glass card before. Oh, come here you. Okay, so that's where I'm going to want that. Alrighty. So I think maybe that leaf whoops, here. You see how the adhesive comes right off the back? Turning it into a sticker. Okay. I don't want it sticking quite yet. So I think if that one is there, and then the double leaf, I'll bring down that way. I think that is good. All right. Now, I'm just going to adhere the leaves where I wanted them. Look, when you pull that off, half of the little insides come out, too. Makes it easy. Quick and easy. I can't do this without my trusty tweezers and that one there. Okay, now we're going to layer these up. I'm going to put about four layers of the leaves and then we'll make the magic. Make sure it's exactly on top. Okay, so now I've got like four or five layers of the die cuts. Can you see it's kind of thick? It's almost like a, as thick as a regular wooden embellishment. And that gives me a nice deep well. Now I'm going to take my dark 
cherry cobbler and my dark pumpkin pie blends and with the pen tip I'm just going to get in here and color in the openings. Alrighty. Yes, I did get marker on the leaf die cuts themselves, but that's okay because I've got one more layer of the die cuts to put on top to cover that. Okay, now comes the tricky part. We need our clear embossing powder. You have to be careful to use just a little teensy tiny bit of embossing powder in the little wells. Just a little bit. If you have too much, it'll go everywhere. So we're going to put just a little bit. I'm going to use the spatula end on my take your pick tool. On the other side is a piercer, but this side is a spatula. And using the spatula end, I'm going to very carefully just put a little bit of embossing powder in each of the wells. You don't want to get it on your regular front because then it'll kind of look like a mess. Okay, I have not filled the wells with the embossing powder. I just put a little layer underneath it. Now you're going to have to heat this from the back, from the underside. Now the Stampin' Up! heat tool has two settings, a low and a high. I really like that because then I'm not 100% sure how well the adhesive sheet stands up to high. You can try it. Maybe you've done some embossing on your um, adhes on your window sheets before, but I'm going to start it out on low, and most of it's going to be done on low. The problem with the high is I'm just afraid it's too much heat too quickly, and I don't want to melt the adhesive sheets. So let's get started embossing underneath it. You go down from the top, it blows your powder everywhere.
I ended up putting it on high. It's not melting the plastic. I'm just going to finish it off on the top. There we go. Ah, I love it. I love it. It reminds me of those stained glass cookies. Yes, I accidentally started out with it on high, and it didn't melt the um, adhesive, I, the window sheets. I did drop down low, but thought, you know, if it's not melting it, I may as well do it on high. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's get the rest of everything put together. We're going to take this, this one, we're going to cover up what I got there, and ah. there we go. would just be so lovely to do just for any kind of card oh Christmas card and if you used something that was more like a framelit than a detailed die then your whole process would be so much easier but I think these leaves are so pretty it's okay ready to get stamping. Now I had originally thought to do the A Little Note to Brighten Your Day from the Changing Leaves set, but I do think I am going to do the May the Beauty of the Season Fill Your Heart with Joy. I'm also using the little sprigs of wheat right there. Now I'm going to cut them out with the oval die from the Changing Leaves die set and that's where the um, the same die set that I got the leaves from now if you're loving this card and you don't have a US demonstrator I'm here for you you can get everything listed that I'm using at my 24 7 store and if you need any help with other items I'm here for you so let's get on with this so I've got a couple little scraps of the basic white just a couple little thin ones and I'm going to use actually I think I'm going to do Cajun craze for the wheat yeah you notice I just tapped I didn't push and smush whoops I guess I should have tapped a little bit more need to re-ink this Pad a little bit. There we go. That'll be nice. And I'm going to do the sentiment in wild wheat. I usually like to do my sentiments in the same colors of my card base. And this is a wild wheat card base. May the beauty of the season fill your heart with joy. I love it. I do have a four by five and a quarter somewhere for the inside and I'm going to do have a perfectly lovely day I think that will be perfectly lovely and I think the 
Stampin' Up acrylic blocks are perfectly lovely. They've got these little grooves in the side so you can get a good grip on it and not drop them. I highly recommend these. Okay, here's my four by five and a quarter panel for the inside. Tap, 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 tap. I like to stamp my inside um, things before I adhere it in case I get crooked or whatever. When I'm using these Stampin' Up blocks, the chance of dropping it are pretty slim because you got a good grip on it. Okay, let me clean this up. Okay, we are so close to being done. Whoops, yikes. That was dramatic. Put these here. Okay, I need to use some washi tape to hold this one down. Washi tape, post-it notes, those are invaluable when we are die cutting. There we go. this folded up and down. All right, let's grab some tear and tape. We're going to put the tear and tape on this little quarter inch folded down section. pieces of from the inside of the leaf stuck all over my fingers. Eek. That's okay. And we're going to take this one and adhere it to that panel just like so. Okay. A little bit of my all-purpose glue. We're going to put this inside the card base itself, right there, and then we're going to take this and adhere it here. Like that, and that's going to come down. So there you have your front, you'll pick that up and this will come open that direction. Oh, I love it! I love it! Let's get the front put together. There we go. And there we go. Now I do have a one by four and a quarter piece of vellum and I'm going to put just a little bit of tear and tape behind it in the middle and put it down here just because I can. There we go. Um, I've got my wild wheat ribbon. Isn't that pretty? It's kind of a off-white creamy color with a shot of the wild wheat through it. So I'm just going to make a little bow
get my paper snips. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I am obsessed with shredding the ribbons. I love shredding these. So I've got a piece that's about four inches long. I'm going to hold it in the middle here and we cut the very edge binding off down to about the middle and on the other side and now we just pull the threads and it makes that beautiful fringe I love it I love the softness. I love the texture of it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to grab a glue dot. One of my mini glue dots. I'll stick it in the middle there. I'm going to do two glue dots just to be just to be extra. There we go. I'm going to fold it over in half. So I've got a nice frondy thing, right? Now I'm going to put that, yeah, clean that off. Okay. Now, here we go. So I've got that nice frondy effect going on, and I'm going to put it behind that. I like it. Let me get just a short little piece of tear and tape. Put it on the back here. Now it is longer than I need it, but you know what? I think I might wrap it around the edge of the fronds. Let's get that. Yeah, I think that's good. We're going to just wrap it around the edge there. Oh, I love it. I d oh, isn't that pretty? Okay, so grabbing some dimensionals. What did I do with my dimensionals? There we go. Here's some dimensionals. I'm just going to put a couple dimensionals on the back of my sentiment. Like so. And a glue dot on the back of my bow. Ah! Loving it! I am loving it! We are almost done. Let's just choose what kind of embellishments to put on the front here. Here we've got the Opal Rounds assortment. I like these. They're kind of clearish looking and I think they would go nicely or I could even use the dark ones if I wanted. These are the opaque faceted gems and that copper clay color would be lovely. And then the adhesive back Milky Dots has a little bit more color saturation if you want the to pull out the yellow. I'm not sure. I'm trying to decide between these two. Now what I did do on the other card, here we go, I used some of the cork rounds that if you have in the house, you can't get them now unfortunately, but if you still have some cork rounds, I think they looked really cute on this paper. 
Let's see. I think, I really think I'm going to go with these. Yeah. The Opal Rounds Assortment. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to do a drip down kind of like on the other card. One there. One there. Yes. Very subtle, but it's something. And one there. <laughs> I love it. I do. May the beauty of the season fill your heart with joy. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? I am just obsessed with this stained glass look and this gorgeous paper underneath. And then have a perfectly lovely day. Oh, this was fun. And you see, it wasn't difficult. It was just a few steps, just layering up those leaves. But I do hope you try this at home. And if you do, post a picture. Let me see. And if you want to try it at home and do not have a U.S.-based Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you'll see my website information up top. It's down below in the description box. And I'm here for you if you have any questions you have or just say hey. So if you like my card, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I am thrilled. I'm, I hope you are. Okay. Until next time, keep making the world a beautiful place. Bye now.